Hi friends, I wanted to make a quick video about my video setup. So I recently upgraded to a DSLR camera um, and I'm gonna talk about some of the mistakes I made and why I did it. If you just kind of like how it looks and want the same thing and don't wanna hear me talk, all the links to my setup are in the description. So <laughs> feel free to read those and be on your way. I wish you the best of luck. Um, you know, I think, uh, the reason honestly that I did it was just, you know, it's been a year of, of lockdown and I've kind of been working from home and I felt like, all right, I think now is kind of a good time to, to just sort of bite the bullet and, and, um, and upgrade my setup. And I'm pretty happy with how it looks now. Um, you know, I didn't end up investing too much. Uh, I had some things already, so I was able to use those but I'm gonna talk about those real quick. So first off, uh, here is what it looks like or looked like through my webcam. And I used this setup for about a year or so. And honestly, it's pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. It's great for Zoom calls. Uh, the best part about this webcam was that it, would, it was pretty wide, so the light would come in pretty well. So even when it was kind of dark, that would work well. And I think, honestly, that's one of the biggest issues is you know when when the sun was out or the light was coming into my room things looked great but when that wasn't the case uh you know it never really looked that good so so that's one thing that i would just say if you have a webcam and it, and it looks pretty decent honestly it may be fine i just felt like you know hey i want to try this out especially because i i make youtube videos so uh the first thing i did was i grabbed a previous generation dslr camera now you, d you definitely don't need to buy like the latest and greatest DSLR. I would, I would actually advise you not to do that, especially if you don't use a DSLR camera otherwise. Um, once you do that, then you also have to decide the lens. So that's half the reason I wanna take this video is I think it's pretty confusing choosing lenses, especially if you're not like a camera person. I'm not really a camera person. I definitely like photography, but I wouldn't say I understand all these concepts that well. And the first thing I did was I just went and took somebody else's setup and was like, yeah, I'll just get all these things. And so that setup included a, um, a certain lens. So, so when you're picking lenses, there's two things that you'll see. One will be something that looks like F 2.8 or F 1.4, that's called aperture. And the other thing will be something like 17 to 35 millimeter or 50 millimeter, that's called focal length. So I'll talk, let's talk about both of those. So, um, the first thing is most of the time when you're getting a DSLR camera for your home setup, you want this like bokeh setup. I think that's how you pronounce it, bokeh, I don't know. Um, you basically want it so that like someone's face is in focus and then the stuff behind you is kind of blurry and it, you know, people want that. So if you want that, you're gonna want a lens that uh, allows you to kind of focus in on certain, certain parts and you know, give you a frame that facilitates that. So um, again, I'm not gonna get into the details, but the first thing I did was I purchased a F 1.8, uh, so the aperture was 1.8, 50 millimeter lens. And that actually is a really close up shot. Uh, this is what it looked like, way too close. And it's because I didn't think about the fact that, um, you know, something I haven't mentioned so far is some of these lenses are variable dynamic in their focus and others are fixed uh, i'm personally a fan of the fixed ones because it's just less thinking it just it just has a certain frame and you can't really you can't like zoom in or out there's no zoom it's just you put it and it's got that um and it's actually good for uh, taking photos as well because then you you don't really again you don't have to worry about zoom so i wanted a fixed lens and i hadn't thought about the distance between me and the camera um now the way that I have it set up, I'm really close to the camera. I basically put it right where my webcam used to be, just a little bit behind using a stand. Um, and so you have to keep that in mind. So in my case, I'm like a few feet away. If you can find a way to have your uh, camera be far away from you, uh, you can get a lens that's 50 millimeter. Um, the way that it generally works is the larger that millimeter size is, the sort of closer it is. It's kind of confusing, but that's what it is. Um, and then, you know, for the, uh, I guess the other thing to keep in mind is like, how big of a picture do you actually want? Do you want it just, just the face and nothing else? Or do you want some of the background? 
So some people want, have even more background, like they have, um, you know, it just looks wider. And so you get an even smaller size. Uh, it would might be like a 17 millimeter or something like that. I kind of like this. It's kind of the middle between having me be, I would say like 50% of the picture. And then it still has some of the background that I have here. So I like the 35 millimeter lens and it, okay. So that's the size uh, F 1.8, why 1.8? Well, so I can actually change that in the camera. Um, you can increase it and what that'll do is it'll just focus, take in more light from everywhere. And so uh, this would be in focus as well. So I can kind of show you that, but you can imagine it, it it'll just look like a normal thing. And in fact, um, here's a screenshot of what it looks like with basically that f-stop set to a really high number. So it kind of just looks like everything is in view. It doesn't really have this effect. So those are the most two important, uh, two most important things. Uh, just make sure when you're picking the lens, obviously it should also be compatible with the camera that you get. Okay, so those are all camera things. Um, the trick though is that even with an amazing camera, especially a DSLR, they're really designed to like accurately capture what they're looking at. So if you don't give them something that's well lit, uh, it won't look very good. So here's an example of what happens if I just turn off, I'm gonna explain what lighting, actually, yeah, let me first explain what lighting setup I have. So I didn't do this at first because I was like, ah, oh, whatever, that seems like too much work. But since I've done it, I really like how it is and it really didn't take much. So I have, there's a, system that people advise to have, which is called like a three, three point lighting system. So there's the front facing light, like shining on you. And then there's like a side light and then there's a light behind you. So the light behind you is just like a floor lamp. It kind of has a little focus, but it's basically a floor lamp. Honestly, I don't even think you need to have something as powerful as that, but, um, any kind of light there will give a little bit of illumination to the background and it'll give a little bit of this reflection thing kind of adds a little character so if i like if i turn it off um you'll see like like yeah you can still see me right like i still look clear but the background looks super dark it's kind of weird actually like maybe you'll have a ceiling light and and, and that'll kind of blush it out but it's up to you kind of what effect you're trying to go for. I do want to have this, this lighting. Now, the other thing you might note is the wall is kind of this blue. That's actually not the paint. There's a, sort of another little light. That's like one of those, I'll, it's in linked in the thing, but it kind of gets you add a colored light. So otherwise it looks like this. The reason why I don't really like that color is cause well, I'm brown and it's kind of cream and it just kind of all melds. So I wanted literally any color other than um, what it is. And so this is kind of nice, but you can actually customize the color. So just those two things um, kind of make the whole background seem much more interesting, much more dynamic, and they contrast from me. And again, that's just like a floor lamp. That's not like some, some fancy thing. And I think you could skip the, the color light thing. It's, I actually, uh, one thing I'll mention is, you know, you don't really want to be necessarily doing this for like every call. I don't know. You know, if, you, if, you, if you're in a Zoom call and everyone else has like a normal webcam and you show up with like a setup like this, it seems, I, I need to test it out cause I'm new to it, but um, you know, I probably wouldn't have all the light and, and it'll probably be in the daytime. So actually here's an example of what it looks like in the daytime. You know, I mean, natural light is honestly the best if you can, it's just most of the time people don't always have that um, coming in. So, so like I said, going back to the lighting. So there's the real lighting, there's a side light. It's just some, it's just like a desk lamp. It's not really anything interesting, but you can even tell if I turn it off, um, you know, now there's the key light, which has more of effect. It's kind of a choice thing. I mean, this could be fine. This could be an effect that you want, you want to, but I kind of like having a little bit of light coming in. And so I'm fairly well lit. Um, I don't know if I showed this yet, but this is how it looks like without this light. So, you know, like, the light really, really, really matters. Um, I ended up getting a, an, an Elgato like key light, but you can actually, what's cool about this light is you can actually control how bright it is. So you could have a really light one. You could you kind of increase it. You can also change the color of the light and things like that. So all that said, you know, think about like, what would, what do you actually like? Um, and try and get little pieces to that. Like I actually bought, little pieces over time. I didn't just buy everything all at once. 
um, and kind of only recently put them all together. But yeah, I mean, if you look at what it looks like with the DSLR here without lighting, and now you look at it here with lighting as it is right now and the, the focal effect, that makes me suggest that if you're going to get the DSLR, you should probably get some lights um, or at least one light and then move stuff around. It's kind of like, it's kind of wasteful almost to like spend the money on the DSLR if you're not going to um, get the lights. But uh, otherwise, yeah, I think, you know, like I said in the beginning, sticking the webcam can work well too. So yeah, anyway, I hope this was helpful and uh, you'll be seeing this setup uh, more going forward. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, feel free to post questions, uh, comments, suggestions, um, you know, in the chat. In fact, I really, really appreciate suggestions because, you know, when I first set it up, I thought, oh, yeah, that's that's fine. And then someone was like, I think you should probably, uh, you know, <laughs> look into lighting. And and I just that light used to be over there and I just moved it and it makes a huge difference. Um, the other thing I noticed is if you actually have the light in the frame itself, like not outside of the frame that actually makes a big difference too it, it really affects how the camera um, kind of kind of interprets the scene so yeah hope that helps see you uh, in the next video